Okay, starting now. Okay, starting now. Um, I first, I first, first I wrote, I first find the mass of the oil. I'm writing them here. Apply. One. Yeah. Huh? Then I explained how I would find. Then point two, I should I explain how to find it? Okay. I would first measure the mass of the container, which I'm going to put the oil in. Measure. And call it mass one. The empty container? Yes. In this container, in this case, because huh? we are using what? Yes. Okay. Yes. That is your cold it M1. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then I pour the oil in the cylinder and also measure the mass using a beam balance. Measure oil. and call it mass two. Then to find the mass of the oil, you get mass two minus mass one. Okay. Oops. Then the second point, I would determine the density of oil by using the formula density is equal to mass over volume. Of about the subject and what is going on. Can you listen just a moment? People who are using to mute when we have told you to mute, I will just remove you from the class. Enough is enough. Huh? We don't want people excited of studying online. There must be some discipline because you are disorganizing other people who are attentive for the lesson. I'll just remove you from the class. You attend the next lesson tomorrow. Watch out. Determine. Determine the density of oil by using the formula density is equal to mass over volume. It depends on that. Like that, huh? Yes, uh -huh. then uh, last step we determine the relative density by getting the density of oil divided by the density of water. Yeah, determine the relative density by the relative density is equal to density of oil. Maybe call this one O over density of water. Where D W is density of water. Thank you very much. What can we say about this? Uh, by show of hands, Navier, you react fast. If you don't show up the hand, I don't select you. Teacher, I've done, I'm going to give the answer. Right, sorry. Uh huh. Uh, Ma Ma Marilyn, Marilyn, something like that. Are we? According to me, what Rihanna has done is also the same thing I did. I don't see any difference, and I think it's correct. Thank you very much. Uh, what else? Who else can react to any of these ones? What do you say? Um, teacher, I think what she did was kind of right, kind of wrong, because mm -hmm. um, she never found the density of water, and she also never found she, she never found the volume to so that it can be equal to to the volume of the oil. Oh, 
So kind of correct, kind of wrong. Uh, probably I think not wrong as such, but probably incomplete would be a better word. Yeah, yeah you, sorry, incomplete. Yes, uh, the fact is what she's trying to say, my son, what my son is saying is that in our question, we are not given the density of water. And now where shall we get the value we shall put here, density of water? Since in our procedures, we have not determined the density of water. That's the argument. I think the best word is incomplete. Huh? The idea in this formula is correct, but the question is how do we And get... um, teacher. And teacher, what else I want, the other thing that I wanted to say is that I thought um, that, that like the volume of the oil is supposed to be the same as the volume of the water. Okay, so that you that, can find the relative density. That's what I was trying to say about the volume. She did not like uh, mention a point to make it. So what, how do you phrase that one if we have to include it in here? Um, for me, what I what I wrote about it, I was like, secondly, I use a measuring cylinder to measure water to 50 centimeters cubed to have the same volume as that of oil. Yes. So we are adding in measure 50. Measure water, 50 centimeters cubed of water. In the cylinder. Yes, in a measuring cylinder. Uh -huh. Now this one we shall have determined the volume. So how do we use it to determine the density therefore? Um, you get the mass, so, um, you use a beam balance, like she has explained the part of mass, you measure the mass of the silly, of the, the container you have in your water, then you name it mass one. Then you also measure the mass. Determine the mass. The mass of water. Water and cylinder. So in this case, you can call it M3. Then you can now determine the mass of the water. That is M3 minus M1. Is that untrue? Remember, M1 yes. is the empty cylinder. Now we can determine the value. Yes, M1 is empty cylinder. That's what you, you use? Yes, that's what I use. Very good. So without wasting time, all of you are correct. The first one is correct, even the second one is correct. However, by virtue of how the question is set, this person will be getting more marks than this one. Why? When you reach this point, after reaching here, determining the density of oil using this, it is correct. But now, the next step, determine the relative density by L to this is equal to density of oil over density of water. Since in the question, they did not give us the density of water, it requires us to first go through this method. And we also determine maybe the density of water first. That is one way. Someone can say, since we have got the mass of the water and we already know the volume of the water, I can first determine the density because I know density is the mass of a volume. So when we get the density of the water using this information, we can now come and put this. Because we already know the density of the oil from here. We are getting the density of the water from this side. Then we can substitute and get the relative density. Another person can use the other definition 
of relative density where we said it is the ratio of the mass of a substrate to the mass of an equal volume of the of water. That's why in this case, after getting the mass of the oil, so if you have to use this method, after here, you must remove this. When we reach this point, huh, we now come to this. We measure 50 cubic centimeters of water in a measuring cylinder. Why 50? That is equal to the amount of oil we use it. Since we use the 50 cubic centimeters of oil, we should also measure an equal volume 50 cubic centimeters of the water. So we determine the weight, the mass of this 50 cubic centimeters of water just like we have determined the mass of centimeters of the oil. Mm. Therefore, from the definition, the relative test is mass of the oil over mass of an equal volume of water. And therefore, we're just substituting the masses without first determining the test. It is okay to first determine the test, it is also okay masses. Remember, we had two definitions of relative density. One was that the ratio of the density of the substance to the density of water. The other definition was it is the ratio of the mass of a substance to the mass of an equal volume of water. So that is what we needed. Uh, did, did almost everyone try out this activity? or you left it to only Bavirie and who else had tried? Or oh, when you had tried, yeah, thank you very much. Who else? No one. So today we are continuing with our discussion. Why do we need to know the relative density of something? One application of the relative density of a substance is to test for purity. Is to test for purity. For example, if you are testing the purity of milk, okay, you are testing the purity of milk, whether it has been over diluted or it is not diluted. All we need to know is the relative density of pure milk. If we know, for example, that the relative density of pure milk is maybe 1.1. So every time you could be operating a shop, huh, a diary, but you also get the milk from suppliers, say from the village, the milk we are coming. Said if you are not, if your hand is not up, please you mute. So I was saying that why do we need no relative density. One application is for testing purity. One, we are saying testing for purity of a substance.
and was using an example of milk. Imagine you're operating a diary. You buy milk from farmers who milk their cows from home. They come and sell you the milk and you also sell to other people. But you need to know whether the milk is pure or not pure to ensure quality of your business. So how do we test? How should we know that this milk that has been brought is still pure? From not added water. We can use the idea of relative density. Once we know the relative density of pure milk, Supposing we know that the, the relative density of pure milk may be being 1.2. Remember, we said the relative density. Teacher, another, let me see. There are some messages here. Teacher, another application is that it is used to test for the purity of gold. Very good. So that's why, that's why we generalized our point. Eh? Testing for purity of the substance. The substance can be the gold, can be milk, can be copper, can be anything. But let's finish it. We are saying, assuming you're operating a diary shop, you buy milk from farmers who milk their cows in the morning, they bring it to you. Probably for purposes of making profits, you have to dilute this milk. But now for you to dilute, you need to have received the pure, first of all. The farmers should have not added in water. But how can you tell that the farmer added in or did not add in any water? What you need is to know the relative base of pure milk. Pure milk and meaning milk without any water added to it. Once you know that value, when someone brings the milk to sell to you, you just have to follow <coughs> Us, which we mentioned earlier in our activity, and you determine the relative density of that milk. After determining, you compare it with the relative density of pure milk. If they are the same, then you know that that farmer has brought to you pure milk. Once the milk is diluted, the relative density will not be this. It can be lower than this, or it can be greater than this. And therefore, you are able to tell the farmer, man, we agreed you should be bringing to me pure milk. Uh-huh. Someone is saying we use a lactometer. Now, we are talking about a case where someone doesn't have a lactometer. Does it mean you should not conduct a business because you don't have a lactometer? Uh, I remember we said the essence of this curriculum, the curriculum you are studying, is to open up your mind. That supposing I don't have salt, does it mean I should not eat? Okay, we are opening up the, the issues of this. Nandudu. Uh -huh. Back to our lesson. Supposing you don't have fire or you don't have charcoal does it mean you should not eat because there's no charcoal we are saying no the essence of this curriculum is to open up your mind and be able to solve community or society problems using many alternatives that's why our objective is not only what you get in your head but what you are able to apply this knowledge for in solving problems you should be able to think open-minded. That's why every time we give an activity, I will not come and start marking according to only my marking guide, no. I listen to several perspectives of thinking. That's why I had to write the answers here. And then after I wrote the answers, I said, what do others have to say about it? Do you realize that we got two ways of determining the relative density? Now, if it was me alone, probably I would have made my marking guide and I deal with only using the masses. But someone gave us an idea that we can also determine the densities first and then we compare the densities. 
that's the, what is very good with this curriculum. So it is an open-minded curriculum. You bring several views and finally come up with what is best in solving problems. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. So I've explained about the milk, determining the purity of it. Another thing someone mentioned about gold. At the beginning, many of you had not joined. We had an example of a scenario in the village that Mr. Kato came across a given mineral which was shining like gold. And to him, he believed that this was gold. But his son said, mm -mm, this one is not gold. And the question was, or the task was, how can we help these two people to come to the conclusion that the material they are having or the rock they found is gold or not gold? So the other one, we used the idea of density, that they had to determine the density of that rock compare it with the density of gold. If they are the same, then it is gold. If they are not the same, then it is not gold. Now, besides using density, we can also use relative density. If we know the relative density of gold, maybe relative density of gold is 4.3. And then you are there in the village and someone comes across with some maybe powder or it is, it is some piece of rock. 19.3. And how someone is telling us that actually the relative base of gold is 19.3. So, you are in the village, someone has picked something, has found something and says, I have gold. You know that if you expose that one to go and ask everyone, is this gold, is this gold? If it is really gold, someone will cheat you and take away. So to you as a student of physics, how do you prove that this one is gold or it is not gold? So you know that the relative density of gold is 19.3. You just have to follow the procedures in the activity we did, determine the relative density of the sample which you have got. If the relative density ends up being 19.3, you can confirm that this material you have is gold. If you realize that the relative density is not 19.3, then you can definitively say this is not gold. Are we seeing the applications of relative yes, density? Yes. Yes. yes, teacher. Yes, yeah. teacher. Ah. Yes, teacher. So we are not studying it for fun. Yeah? One point eight. We also had an activity to do with testing the purity, the quality of wood. We had a scenario and we did that activity. Where someone wanted to buy furniture, but wanted to come back. So, so I'm about to, to, to remove some people. Nagawali has first mute. If I remove you, I will not I will not mute you, but remove you from class. And once I remove you. You can't attend this lesson again. You wait for another one. Miranda Lewis, first, uh, first mute. You run the mute when you have something to say. Priscilla Chirago, do the same. When you have something to say, you rise up the hand, I choose you. Good, very good. So we continue. Uh, I was saying that we had an activity where there's someone who wanted to buy furniture and he wanted to choose the best wood. And we use the idea of determining the density of the different samples available. So sometimes we may not determine the, 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 the density of the material, but rather the relative density. And it can help us to determine the best quality type of wood for making someone's furniture. Ruth Karunji. You have something to say. 
the chita it's used for finding good materials for construction of building. Very good. We can also use it to determine the quality of building materials. These days we are having, for example, iron bars. We expect or we want to use pure iron to make those iron bars because you are constructing a skyscraper where you should not play around with people's lives who will be using that building. So you want to test the purity of that iron bar you are going to use. All you need is to know the relative density of pure iron. So you can cut just a small piece of that iron bar to act as your sample. You determine its relative density. If it matches with the one of a pure iron, then you have the best material. If they don't match, you tell the seller, no, 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 this is not pure iron. So I'm not buying from you. I don't want to play around with people's lives. Are we together? Application number two. To determine whether the material floats in water or sinks. This is what mainly we talked about last time. Uh, we talked about the densities, the relative densities, that when the relative density of the substance is greater than one, this material sinks in water. If the relative density is less than one, the object floats. And if it is equal to one, it submerges. Yeah, it submerges. Okay. So that is another way of applying a relative density. If you have something and you want to throw it in water, you are not sure whether it is going to float or it is going to sink. You first determine its relative density. If the relative density is greater than one, then you know if I throw this one in water, it is going to sink. If the relative density is less than one, then you know that the, that object is going to float. And when it is equal to one, then the, the particle the match. Submerge. Submerge, we said, is the midpoint of sinking and floating. It's in the middle, not floating and sinking. Ah, it can yeah. be in the middle. Or it can dip somehow partly in water and partly outside. We still say it is submerged. Eh? Okay. It can be in the box, yes. Uh, Ingalls, you are welcome. Are you online? Ingalls, can you unmute? Hey, not available. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So we continue. Now, any questions so far from what we have discussed? Yes, the child. I'm asking like when you're finding the, the relative density of something, like when you're finding the relative density of iron, like iron bar, you want yes. to find out whether it's iron. What's the other thing you use? Okay. First of all, you need to know, probably you can be having a chart. You can have a chart of relative densities of substances. Like someone told us here, yeah, the relative density, this is substance. Uh, and then decide to have the relative densities. For example, someone told us the one for gold is 1.2, is 19.3. So we can use, for example, Mr. Google, sir. You know Mr. Google, sir? To determine the different relative densities. And so you have for iron, you know it. For copper, you know it and so on. So you have already a chart of the relative densities of the pure substances 
And therefore, what you shall do, if you get a small piece of that of that iron bar, you measure its mass, you determine its volume. Since it will probably be irregular, you can use the displacement method to determine the volume of that sample. If it is regular, maybe it is in a cylindrical format, then you can use the formula for volume of a cylinder. So you need to measure the radius of the, of the iron bar. You need to determine its what? You need the radius and then the height of the sample. So you can use the formula to determine the volume. So once you have the volume, then this is mass over volume. So you can determine the density of this. And then you know that density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. So you compare the, the mass, the density you get here, you divide it in this way. Density of the sample divided by 1,000, you have the relative density. Then you can now compare it with what is here in your chart. That they match, if they don't match, then it is not pure iron. If they match, then it is iron. So teacher, every substance is always out of water. Exactly, we said once we talk of relative density, it is compulsory that it is a comparison with the water, not any other substance. Okay, thank you, I get now. All right. So I want us to go ahead and determine Sometimes uh, we use what we call alloys. Who knows the meaning of alloy and alloy? I. What is an alloy? An alloy is a metal made up of either two metals or a metal and a non-metal. So in other words, it is a combination. Yes. We have what we call brass. Brass is a metal, but it is made. It is a combination of what and what. Anyone who knows? Miracle. Copper. Copper and zinc. Copper and zinc. Copper and zinc. Copper and zinc. So it is an alloy. Now. If brass is made of copper and zinc, each one of these ones, copper has its own density and zinc has its own density. Now, which density does brass take up? I think it takes copper. I think it takes an average. As someone says it takes an average. Another one says it takes copper. Who else has a different? It's time for I think it takes I think it takes both. Yeah. It might take copper. Okay. In average or copper. Both both means what now? Supposing this one is nine. Like both pans in It will take like eight. Around there. <laughs> Around like, there. No, nine plus seven, then you get it all together, then you get its density. Uh-huh. May I think that it will be greater than zinc because copper is more and it's brass is made out of copper. So okay. it, it may is. not be great, it won't be greater than copper, it won't be it won't be less than zinc to be eight. That's what I think. That's what you think. Thank that's you that's the teacher, Google says yeah. Teacher. Yeah. Google says zinc has more than copper. Yes. Do you have you seen the figures specifically? Has Mr. Google given you the values so that we put them here? No, but it says it has a wider variation of zinc than other elements. Okay, let me also consult him as Al has also consulted Mr. Google. Sir. In any case, our, our issue is not getting specifically the value of copper and zinc. Eh? We are saying yeah. supposing it's 30, now it's 39 percent zinc, 39 percent zinc, 39 percent zinc, yeah, percent. 
So this one is the 61. So do we, do we see the composition of brass? Yes. Do you think with these percentages, it is right to get the average? Would the density be the average? Because what this one means is that if we have 100 grams of brass, out of this one, 61 grams will be copper. Ah, you know symbols. And the 39 grams will be zinc. Do you think the density will remain the average when the masses are not equal? What do we have to say? I like this curriculum. Eh? We discuss. We can always change the what is this the percentages into numbers. Like okay. and there it is. We have sixty-one and then thirty-nine. Teacher, they when you calculate that, when you calculate the average is fifty. The average is fifty. So the density will be fifty. So that's the argument I wanted us now to open the minds and first discuss. Huh? But that's what I want us to look at. For example, uh, our topic is determining densities of mixed chance. Determining densities of mixtures. For example,
we want to try out this one as an example in determination of densities of mixtures. Can we quickly write out the question because we may need that space for writing. How many minutes can we use to determine to do that? As in writing, three minutes, okay. Three minutes, we should have finished writing that question. But three minutes, you mean every letter you'll be using 10 seconds. Meanwhile, I can be reading some of these messages in here. Three minutes. Uh, which I don't know the subject because I have just joined the art. Lost the network. Okay, they told you we are doing physics. Good. Now I'm lost. Which topic is this, please? Measurements. We are doing measurements in physics. Uh -huh. And the relative density in particular. Thank you. Uh, teacher, another application is that it is used to test for the purity of gold. I think I read that one. That one you use a lactometer to test for the amount of water in the milk. And we also talked about that one, that supposing you don't have a lactometer, do you just buy even uh, the dead milk? Mm -hmm. I have never even seen a lactometer. You can't be from the center and you expect to see a lactometer. Those lactometers are that side where they are cows. Uh -huh. Only so it in a textbook. Uh -huh. It's better you know something about it. You see, we study North America when, when we have even not seen it even in movies. Uh -huh. Find mass of milk and water and find mass of pure milk and then subtract masses. Is that okay? When you are doing what? We can't say it is okay when we don't know what you exactly wanted. Uh -huh. It was a mirror, was wanted to buy furniture. Who wanted to buy furniture? If that activity was done, probably you had not joined. We started with the, like an activity of integration. Uh -huh. Probably you consult one of your colleagues to help you with that work. Relative density can also help to quantify the buoyance of any substance. Uh -huh. That one is better, I think, to, see, to do with the identifying whether something can float or can sink. Have we finished writing this? Yes, teacher, I have good. Good. Uh, there's a message I've read here from Wong Farid. Relative density can also help to quantify the buoyance of, uh, of any substance. Now, this one, I, I just want to expand on it a little. Farid, thank you very much for this. You know, ships float on water when they are even made of what? Of steel, eh? Ships, ships, those ships and ferries are not made of wood like these small canoes. They are made of metals, which metals we expect to be sinking. But how comes they don't sink? It is, I think, what we are, we are looking at now. When we talk about uh, determining densities of mixtures, that ship has what we call air tanks. There is, this, there is some space which is filled with only air. And therefore the ship is looked at as being a combination of that air and the steel. How we shall determine the density here is how we determine the overall density of the ship. And the air that is put in there is such that when you combine the density of the air and the density of the metals used to make the the, the, the ship, the average, not average density, the overall density of the ship is less than that of water. As a result, 
the, the ship does not sink. Now it will not sink depending on what other load you are adding on to the ship. If you add more than what is expected, the ship can still sink because you are making it density to become less than that of the water. And therefore it will sink. So I think we shall answer it better when we have done this. Huh? Let's first work on this. So you have already given us your views about what we can do to this such a scenario. But in summary, what we do is that we know that density is mass over volume. None of us is objecting that, not so. Even Thelma knows yes. that. Good. So if I want to get the density of the mixture, I should be able to get the mass of the mixture and the volume of the mixture. It's just that one. So in this case, the density of liquid Z, of, of mixture Z, will be equal to mass of Z over volume of Z. How do I get the mass of volume Z of, of, of Z? I get the mass of X. I add there the mass of Y. Why do we say this? Imagine if this one, for example, was water. When we measure 50 grams of water, uh, someone is asking, doesn't the broad surface of the ship enable it to float? We should talk about that, don't worry. Uh huh. I was saying, if I mixed 50 grams of water with 50 grams of milk, doesn't the total become 100 grams of the mixture? Does the mass of any one of them reduce because we have mixed them up? No. 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 The mass does not change. That's why I'm saying the mass of mixture Z is actually the mass of X plus the mass of Y. So the masses will not change. Likewise, the volume, if I mixed 50 cubic centimeters of water with 50 cubic centimeters of milk, won't I get 100 cubic centimeters of the mixture? Would the volume of any one of the liquids reduce? No, no the they would not reduce. not reduce. So here we are talking of volume of X plus volume of Y. So from our question here, if we are doing we just do the mass of liquid X, mass of liquid Y, and add them to get the mass of the X. We get the volume of liquid X, add it to the volume of liquid Y, we get the volume of the mixture. Then we shall get the density from here of the mixture. Are we now at par? Yeah. Yes, teacher. So we don't just talk about averages. We can talk about average when, for example, copper is in a, big, in a bigger percentage compared to the zinc. The average will not be working here. Average would work if zinc was 50 and copper was also 50. But if one is the other, so we continue now. We want to answer the question. Number one, we're asking for the mass of the mixture. We have said the mass of the mixture, that is mass of Z, is equal to mass of X plus mass of Y. But have we been given these masses? No. But at least we know the formulas for determining the mass. That means um, if it is mass of liquid X, mass is given by density times volume. So I talk of density of X times volume of X. 
This one is the mass of the good X. Plus, if I want mass of Y, I will talk of density of Y times the volume of Y. Are we together? Yes, teacher. The reason I'm doing this one is because in the question, we have not been given the mass directly. But at least we have been given the density as well as the volume. So we can use these ones to become the masses. Can I now substitute for x? What is the density of x? Um, it's one gram, one gram per centimeter cubed. Uh, I must. What is the volume of liquid x? One hundred centimeters cubed. So the mass will be one times. Yes. Uh -huh. Plus, we go to the y. What's the next y? Zero point eight grams per centimeter. Times the density of one hundred centimeters cubed. Can we do the mathematics? What we get here? What a plus eight? Is that true? This our our volume was in cubic centimeters and our density is in terms of grams per centimeters cubed. Our mass we are getting here is in grams. Are we there? Yes, teacher. Yes. Then Roman 2 says we find the density of the mixture. We say the density of the mixture is equal to mass over volume. Now, it means density of Z is equal to Mass of Z, we have got it as 230. Then the volume, how do we get the volume? The volume we said is volume of X plus volume of Y. That means 150 plus 100. Means we are calculating 230 divided by 150, I mean 250. 250. What do we get? Zero points. Someone with a calculator or someone who did P6 very well and can compute using her head or his head better. But that explanation is making me more confused. Zero point nine two. You people, didn't we copy relative density notes? Someone has 0 0.92. Is it true? Because the 23 is on top and the 25 is at the bottom. So it's 0 0.92. So the density and it has units. Huh? 0 0.92 grams per centimeters cubed. Why? Our volume is in centimeters cubed. Our mass is in grams. So the unit is grams per centimeters cubed. Mm -hmm. Then we go to Roman 3. Just a moment. 
Have we finished the answer of the next part? The next question requires us to find the relative density. We are saying relative density equal to density of the substance, that is density of Z over density of water. But remember, the density of water has been given in kilograms. When you know that I need KB from home, you will be mute. You may let us you may let us listen to KB, which is, does not concern us. Like the one going on, actually, I don't understand what's going on. Okay, let's quickly finish. Relative density is density of liquid Z of mixture Z over density. People who are starting to misuse. By the way, who is Roth? Who is using Henry Roth? Can you talk to me? Henry Roth. What's your name? Come again. I don't I don't remember us having anyone registered in the name of Henry Roth. So we can just terminate you from our program if you can't speak, uh, you can't speak to me. Who is Roth? Yes. Are you registered with us? No. Then why did you attend our lesson? Who gave you the, the link? Henry? No one. Yeah. No one, no one gave you the link. I just saw it in the platform. Oh, did we put it on the platform? Now, you are not registered with us, therefore you are not meant to be part of this lesson. You had it first asked for permission to enter class. Now it is you who is starting even to misuse the chat room. When you are here illegally, that's very bad. Okay. So we are saying density of the mixture divided by density of water. 
But we are saying the density of water is given in, in, the gra in kilograms per meters cubed, while this density is in grams per centimeters cubed. Before we substitute in here, we must change each one of them to be in the same unit. So either we are changing the 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed to grams per centimeters cubed, or we are changing the 0 0.9 grams per centimeters cubed to the kilograms per meters cubed. And then we can substitute. They must be in the same units first before substituting. What do we do? Quickly, our time is up. That's why the numbers are reducing. Ruth, Karunji? Teacher, it's a question, not an answer. Yes. Was in the question, wasn't the density of the water in grams? So why are we changing it to kilograms? Mm -hmm. It is even still here, the very last statement. Density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter. Did you write this last statement? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Was there. Achen Sidonia, how are you? Achen? By the way, I'm leaving this one as an assignment. Eh? Our time is up. Either change the 0 0.92 grams per centimeters cubed to kilograms per meters cubed, or you change the 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed to grams per centimeters cubed, and then you substitute and get the relative density. In the next lesson, I expect you to give me the answer first before we continue. I was still talking to Achen Sidonia. I hope that is how you read it. Can you unmute and talk to me? Azra Muzani. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm fine. Let me say this statement for the last time. When we send you the link, it is specifically yours. On the page, that page had every form one in school. Those who have paid us and those who didn't pay. That's why we don't put the link on the page. We specifically send it to those who have subscribed to this program. When we send it to you, don't pretend to be a good Samaritan that you're now going to give to everyone. That's not okay. Please don't put the, the link on the page. The authority to give out this link is specifically to the program administrators, not you. In case you have any issues with the link, you can call me, you can WhatsApp me, you can WhatsApp or call Mr. Namdala, or you could also consult Mr. Sendaula, but not on the platform. That platform is not specifically that everyone who is there is uh, subscribed to this program, no. Don't you think it would even been easy, it would have been easy for us to be putting the link on the page so that everyone gets it? Why is it that we send it specifically to individuals? So the next time anyone who, whether by error, whether by omission or commission, puts the link on the page, we shall terminate you there and then without refund. Because we have said this time and again. We shall not refund your money, neither will you continue with us. We just terminate you. Am I loud and clear? Yes. Yes, teacher. We are sharing it with the likes of Roth Henry who are coming in to misuse our chat room. The chat room is for academic purposes. I can see, ha, 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 what does that mean? In our lesson, we didn't have things like that. I want to wish you a nice lunch. Thank you, Ingalls. teacher. Thank Ingalls. you, teacher. Ingalls, WhatsApp me. Send me something on, on WhatsApp. It's like I lost your number. Ingalls, okay. at high. 
Bye. Bye. Bye.